I want to go over in some interesting pitch data here that brings insight into how your arm path can affect your spin efficiency. So we can see here spin efficiency is at 63%, which is, which is poor, which means there's a lot of rifle spin in the ball. And we look at the yellow angle here, that's going to be the release point at about 130. And then the blue is going to be the spin axis at almost 12 o'clock. What's going on is the arm is at a three-quarter slot, but the wrist is kicked up to create a vertical uh, spin axis. The problem is with this, even though it's a very probably interesting perspective for the batter, it looks very unique and could be very effective, to get out of the rifle spin, that's the challenge because if you're in a three-quarter slot and you're cocked up with the wrist to a vertical uh, spin axis position, if there's any rotation or fly out on the arm, you're going to be getting around the ball, creating the poor rifle spin. So therefore, if you had a spin axis in sync with your uh, release position, there's less chance you probably get around. You stay more true through the pitch, which improves your, your spin efficiency. This is the actual biomechanics from that, from that pitch. And you can see, specifically if we go to a top view, as the shoulders come around right here, there's so much rotation that you can see the arm flying out into extension. So all that angular velocity at a vertical spin axis from a three-quarter slot is going to push around the side of the ball and create all that poor uh, that, or that rifle spin. So, you know, two ways we could fix this. We could just work on not being in such a cocked up vertical uh, wrist position, uh, or we could work to be, not get so much forearm fly out here. So you can see how the arm is really flying out when he comes around uh, into release. So that means there's a lot of angular momentum. So if I go and look at, say, uh, on his left wrist, or I'll just do left shoulder, or no, let's do wrist, wrist path, you can see as the, if I look at the front here, as the elbow comes around or glove side comes around, there's a lot of pull across the body here to release, specifically at the point the elbow is going into extension, there's a lot of that pull. So to get that, we have to go back to the beginning of the movement. And you can see right here, instead of opening and, uh, and really driving through the back hip, the back hip is late. So he's landing right here with a late back hip. The hip's way closed. So that means that glove has to help out and pull across the body aggressively to help bring around the shoulders as opposed to the hip continuing to drive through. And if the hip continues to drive through, it complements more of the momentum built going, moving down the mound. And then the trunk wants to go more forward to release as opposed to continuing to rotate around and release. And we can also see that when we look at the peaks uh, of all the segments in our angular velocities here, this is the red is the hip peak, the blue is the glove peak, and we can see the blue is pulling earlier than the hips and more aggressively than the hips. So if we go back to the delivery, we can see right here, the hip is peaking, but yet it's not all the way through. Then the, and before that, because it, it was basically not peaking powerful enough right here, the glove starts pulling and creating all the angular forces right there to swing the trunk around and it creates more of that fly out or complete extension, which if you're in a vertical a spin axis or a vertical release of your wrist, that causes you to get around the ball, that causes you to create this rifle spin, all that rifle spin leading to poor uh, efficiency and also creating poor movement. Therefore, we see um, only 10 inches of lift when they're probably, ideally, we want to see something like 17, 18 inches of lift. And the only way that's going to happen is if we create more true spin or get that spin efficiency better.